Now to Bangladesh, where rescuers are feverishly digging through a huge pile of rubble for a third day. They're looking for anyone who's survived since Wednesday when an eight-story factory building collapsed on itself. Right now, they're working to reach a pocket in the wreckage where around 50 people have all been discovered alive on the third day. Anger, understandably, is running high over this disaster. There are protests. People think it could have been prevented. Large crowds, in fact, are turning out just as the death toll is climbing. Journalist David Bergman joins me now from Dhaka, Bangladesh, with the very latest. So, uh, David, uh, among the tragedy there, uh, at least people are still being pulled out alive. Talk to us about this ongoing rescue operation, what it's like on the ground. Well, you go to the scene and it is apparently very chaotic. Uh, there are a huge amount of people watching the scene. Uh, there are some professional rescuers, but a lot of local volunteers trying to help desperately to find the people. And when I was there the other day, I saw um, more local people than actual professionals digging the people out. Today I was at a local hospital and uh, some, board, some live people, some people still surviving, being dragged out and were taken to the hospital amongst with cheers going up when they did arrive at the hospital. So there is hope amongst the despair for sure. Right, but the death toll right now, where, where does it stand? It's coming up to 300. Um, and when I was today, when I was at the hospital, I saw lots of relatives showing the pictures of the people, who, their, their loved ones who uh, they believe are still trapped in the yeah. factory, but they haven't appeared at any of the hospitals or anywhere else. And so they're fearing that they're dead and they're just be going around from hospital to uh, anybody who can, they think can help them try to give information about uh, wh where these people might be. And David, what we're seeing now on our screens are just these terrible images of uh, survivors unzipping body bags, I, I imagine, to try to identify the, the, the body inside to see if it's a relative or a loved one or, or, or somebody that they can identify. I mean, that's right. I mean, uh, there are more dead bodies now being what? put out than live ones. There could well be many hundreds of people still under the wreckage. It's not clear exactly how many people were in the factories when the building collapsed. Um, however, it's estimated that there are about 300 more people, 300 families are saying that they have relatives that are missing. So it's maybe that kind of number that remains uh, to be discovered under the building. And briefly, I want to show some footage that was shot before this building collapsed from a local news crew showing giant cracks in the building structure. There were warnings that this might happen, right, David? That's the most extraordinary thing, and that's one of the things that is really piling on the anger. Obviously, people in Bangladesh are just find a shocked by the huge numbers of deaths, but it's also the circumstances in which this collapse took place. The day before the incident, the owner of the factory uh, was told about a crack. He saw the crack and was advised by an engineer and other officials that workers should not be brought into this factory until some specialist engineers came and looked at it. So the following morning, despite having been told that, uh, he, uh, and although workers were concerned about going in, he gave the green light to the factories for them to bring their workers in. And an hour after that happened, the building collapsed. So it was entirely preventable. And clearly, the people of Bangladesh just perceived this to be a very callous action on the part of the uh, owner of the, this building. David Bergman in Dhaka, Bangladesh, thank you so much for joining us and bringing us more details on this developing tragic story for uh, these Bangladeshis working in that building and their loved ones.